In this lesson, we're going to do a couple examples where we're actually asked to find two pieces of information. So the first example says, the sum of two numbers is 9. Twice the larger number is 3 less than 5 times the smaller number. Find the numbers. Okay, so they throw a lot of information out there at us, and it's not a, exactly um, easy to wade through all those words. And so it's really important to go back to the uh, principles we laid out um, in the first video in this section um, of kind of taking this story problem solving process step by step. So remember the first thing that we were asked to do is identify what's being asked for. And we can tell that quite easily that we're being asked to find two different numbers, right? So find both numbers. So keep in mind that that's what we're actually trying to answer here is what those numbers are. And then once we've identified what we're looking for, we need to assign a variable to that unknown. Well, since there's two unknowns here, uh, we need to basically just pick one of the numbers um, to be our variable. And so there's a larger number and there's a smaller number involved, and it really doesn't matter which you choose. Um, I'm going to let x be the larger number. And it, it does not matter at all which one is x, but I'm just going to arbitrarily pick uh, the larger number is x. And then remember, if there are two things you're looking for, you're supposed to write the other one in terms of the x. And so we're supposed to have our smaller number as an expression involving x. Okay. So we go back to this first sentence. The sum of two numbers is 9. So if I know that two numbers add to 9, what can I say about the smaller number? Well, if you're struggling to come up with this, um, remember that you can always plug in a fake number for x. Right? So you know, suppose the larger number is 7. Well, in that case, what would the smaller number have to be? Okay, well, it'd have to be 2. And at the point that you can answer that question, really think to yourself, okay, what did I do in my mind to get 2? Well, we understood they had to add to 9, so I took away the 7 that the larger number was, and the leftover amount was 2. So the key is I took away the larger number from 9. So that means if the larger number is x, I need to take it away from 9. Okay, so now we have our variable identified, and then we have the other thing we're looking for in terms of um, that other variable, or that x variable. And now we go over to this long sentence here. But remember, we can make it less intimidating by finding the equal sign in that sentence. And so right here, of course, is our equal sign. That word is often shows up, and that's where our equal sign is, is at. So I'll put my equal sign here and that's going to allow me to just pay attention to what's on the left separately from paying attention to what's on the right. So twice the larger number, well the larger number is x, so twice the larger number would be 2 times x. Alright, now we have 3 less than 5 times the smaller number on the right of the equal sign. Okay, So 3 less than Right? We understand that that means you're going to take 3 away from something. Okay, So what is that something? 5 times the smaller number. Well, 5 times, what is the smaller number? The smaller number is 9 minus x. So if you're going to multiply 5 by multiple terms, you better put them in parentheses. Okay, So this is a little cramped here, so let me rewrite it. All right, so of course we have to start by distributing. So 2x equals 45 minus 5x minus 3. I can combine my 44, or sorry, my 45 and my 3. So that's 42 minus 5x. All right, and here's a situation where uh, we are running out of room. So I'm going to just understand that I'm going to add 5x to both sides, and then since I've run out of room, which is unfortunate, I'll just draw an arrow up here so it's really clear to my reader that 
This process simply continues over here in this column. So I end up with 7x equals 42. And then of course I can divide by 7 on both sides. So we end up with x equals 6. Now after all that work, it's really tempting just to circle this and walk away. But remember, we always have to go back and make sure we're answering the question being asked. The thing that we were asked to do was find the numbers, right? Numbers plural. So they want both the larger number and the smaller number. All we've done is found the larger number. So we can say that the larger number equals 6, but we also need to state what the smaller number is. Well, we can just go back to this expression. The smaller number was 9 minus whatever the larger number was. And since the larger number is 6, go 9 minus 6. So, of course, our smaller number is 3. So, don't forget that last step of checking to make sure you're actually answering the question being asked. All right, let's do one more here. It says the sum of two numbers is 39. The larger number is equal to 6 less than double the smaller number. Find the numbers. So we kind of have a similar setup here. And just to show that it doesn't matter which is x, the larger or the smaller number, this time I'll make the smaller number x. And I'll have the larger number be, well, what should it be? Well, again, if you're having trouble coming up with it, suppose the smaller number is 9. What's the larger number? Well, it would have to be 30, right? Because you would take 9 from 39, and what's left over would be 30. So in general, we have to take the total and then take away how much we've already used. So that would be x. All right, so now let's take a look at the sentence here. Let's find the equal sign, and there it is. So it says the larger number is, so what is the larger number? It's just 39 minus x, so I'll simply write 39 minus x equals, and then, and actually we have, it's even more explicit here, it says is equal to, right? So kind of this whole thing is my equal sign. All right, now six less than double the smaller number. So six less than means I'm taking away six, just like I had in the previous um, example. And then double the smaller number, where well, that's just two times x. All right, so we need variables on the same side. So 39 equals 3x minus 6. I can add 6 to both sides. And again, I'll continue over on this side here. So we have 45 equals 3x. And then I can divide both sides by 3, giving me 15 equals x. But again, I need to make sure that I'm answering the question that's asked. So we know that the smaller number equals 15. And so the larger number is, of course, 39 minus 15. All right. So that's, of course, going to give me 24.